Um, before we begin into the discussion, I would first like to invite up Arno Yunza, um, Director of the Latvian Writers Union and one of the organisers of Poetry Days 2023 to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, I, I have a very long speech, you know. Uh, it's only one page, but uh, it's very small letters. Don't worry, I will speak very long. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Your Excellencies, uh, ladies, gentlemen, uh, friends. Uh, we live in the world that politicians at the highest level talk about cultural diversity, about indigenous languages, and both the European Union and the United Nations take care of this. And we in, Latvia, in, uh, in Latvia used to say, if politics uh, speak too much, it's always a little bit dangerous. Uh, uh, however, the cultural diversity and the surviving of languages is uh, what uh, we all face every day in our lives, um, uh, even if we don't think about it. Uh, today, more and more people in Latvia are starting, started, starting to think what will happen to the Latvian language if we all start to use English, and use English every day and every minute. On, on the other hand, we in Latvia have unique language experience and I had the idea to invite to the discussion table people who have this unique uh, language experience. First of all, Livonian poets, Latgalian poets and Irish poets who are not Latvian, uh, but uh, they well know what it is like to create in the native Gaelic language being under the pressure of English language. Maybe it will help us to understand what we should do for protection of Livonian, Latgalian and Latvian languages in future. Uh, and uh, let me introduce... Can I take it? Yeah. Okay. Large place. Uh, let me introduce uh, all of... Uh, um, all participants of this... Uh, uh, discussion. First of all, Livonian poet uh, Waltz Anstreit, then I see uh, Irish poet Molly Tummy, uh, then uh, I see yeah, Anya I Aulu, I correct? Yes. Uh, and Joseph o. Murphy, uh, all from, for, from Ireland, and Anna Ransan uh, represent Latgalian and Latvian parliament too today. But uh, before they start uh, to discuss, first of all, please, uh, Your Excellency, Irish Ambassador in Latvia, Heimer Friel. Uh, Heimer, please, a few words. Thank, thank you, Arnu. La Vakar Vitiam, Dave Galer, August Falteroiv, and Shonot Tomic Galer Lakela, Salaril and Nashunta. So you're very welcome here this evening. We're all together in the National Library of Latvia. And I'm, I'm really delighted to see such a lovely gathering. Um, we have a very unique event. I think Arno used the word unique. I also have the word unique written down. It's brings, bringing together poets from Ireland and from Latvia, discussing those challenges of writing poetry in smaller languages. When I arrived in Latvia two years ago, um, they say Latvians are introverted, um, but nobody, nobody was shy to tell me all about the really valuable and valued song and dance traditions. And it really appealed to me as an Irish person coming from a country where song, dance and music are part of our fabric. But the Latvian love of literature was something I only discovered gradually. It was like a treasure that had to be uncovered. Um, and time and time again over the past two years, I've really been taken by the creativity and the enthusiasm for literature in Latvia. So a light conversation can turn into a deep exploration of ideas and meaning and perspectives, just like flicking a switch. It's really incredible. And in Ireland, our literary tradition runs really deep. Um, poetry is at its core. Um, since ancient times in Ireland, since the times of myths and legends, poets held a really powerful role in Irish society. So the history of Ireland, its language, its education, its social structures, it's threaded entirely with poets. Poets who are held in great power and influence, poets who are revered, poets who are feared. Um, some could ruin your reputation if you didn't do the right thing with them. Um, and poets who suffered as well. But Ireland continues to be captivated by poetry. Um, we turn to poetry to help us interpret the world, to help us find solace in challenging times, and to be inspired as we navigate in life's journey. So I feel the same is true here in Latvia. 
I'm continually struck, be it in Ireland or be it in Latvia, by the extent to which people write and experience poetry. Uh, and I say experience not because I'm pulling on some marketing jargon, but because I believe that you don't read poetry, you experience poetry. Um, and that's why this evening is really exciting for us, because we're bringing pe together some wonderful people in vaults, Anya, Anna, Joseph and Molly, to explore what poetry means to them and the art of writing in smaller languages. I can think of all sorts of questions, but I know we are definitely in for a fascinating discussion. We've been on an exciting journey these past two years as we've looked at different angles um, of the connections and similarities between Irish and Latvian literary worlds. And I have a feeling that there are some more exciting things to come. But none of this would be possible um, without the ongoing and unwavering partnership that we've had with the National Library of Latvia. And I want to extend a particular thanks to Victoria, who's hiding over in the corner there, and through you, Victoria, to Mr. Vilks. Um, and while noting the presence of us here in the National Library today, I'd also just like us to remember um, Gunnar Spukertz, the um, architect of this fabulous building, who's being memorialised as well today in the building um, up on the 11th floor. So a special thought to his family as they gather and, and, and think about the, the wonderful legacy that he's left. Um, also, the support of Literature Ireland and its director, Sinead McKay, that has been really essential for us in delivering projects like this and bringing us truly literary treasures like Molly, Joseph and Anya here. We wouldn't be here today without the great cooperation that we've developed with the Writers' Union, with Arno Junza, whose curiosity about Irish really gave us the inspiration to do this, and to Katrina, who's almost hiding in the back, um, who's really worked tirelessly in the organisation of this event, and indeed for the whole Poetry Days Festival. I'd like to wish you and the Writers' Union the very best for the rest of the festival as well. It's got a fantastic lineup. Um, there's a rule in diplomatic circles that you don't start thanking people because you might leave someone out, but I, I think I've broken that rule. <laughs> so I just want to acknowledge a few more people before um, I stop talking. To Anna, I want to thank you for joining us and for your willingness to do this conversation. We're really glad to call you a friend of Ireland. Waltz, we're really honoured by your involvement in this event. We hope it won't be your last engagement with Irish literature. The Ivor Steinbergs and Eva Lashinska gave us here as well, I think, also hiding in the corner. <laughs> There's a lot of hiding in the corner going on. Real Leal Spaldias for turning Irish poetry into Latvian. It's incredible what we've done, and we know that that in itself is an art form. So thank you for that. To Jutta and Alexanders, who are here as well from the library and all the team in the library, thank you for your organisational assistance. And to my own team at the embassy, Senya's here, Chris is here, Janis is here. For everything you've done, a particular thank you to Marta, who some of you will have met coming in, who arrived in the embassy on the 12th of July and was handed this in her lap and stepped onto the ship of the moving project like she'd always been there along. Marta, big thank you to you for making this happen today. Dear friends, enjoy the conversation, enjoy the poetry, enjoy the evening. Winnegi Salt, Osan Ogodsha, Valtz, it's in your hands now. Thank you very much, and um, um, dear ladies and gentlemen, Excellency, I am uh, particularly glad that uh, uh, I was privileged to have this conversation, and I think that this is an important one, and uh, it takes place in a very important time as well. Uh, here we have three regions, three different poetries. I wouldn't say in smaller languages because there are no languages small or big. There are languages spoken by many and those spoken by few. But um, it is very important that we keep that diversity in a culture, in a languages, and especially because uh, now uh, this year and the next decade is declared by United Nations a decade of indigenous languages, which is maybe not a nice term to be used in Europe, but the broader idea of that decade is that we really need to preserve linguistic diversity, we need to preserve cultural diversity, and while the world has understood already 
need for uh, diversity in biology. We know why all species should be should be kept and pro protected. So the I, understanding that for the humanity, this cultural and linguistic diversity is important. It's yet to be actually created. On the other hand, it's very important moment for for. Uh, uh, indigenous people of Latvia, so Livonians, because this year is also a year of the Livonian heritage, and this is the moment when when we can also maybe get a little bit more into spotlight Livonian literature and all other literatures who may be accessed by fewer people um, than others. Creating literature and creating new culture for me personally is very important. Um, there, mm, there are lots of talks about intangible heritage and how, how we need to keep our heritage running. And it's very important. And, and th there is this idea behind that, that these are kind of the roots that we rely on. And it's uh, important to take care for your roots, which is correct. Because roots is really something that gives you a place where you stand on. But no tree can only live with roots. It also needs branches, it, it, it needs leaves. And that is something that new cultural products, new literature created for, uh, for uh, every community actually, uh, uh, where it, it is very important. Because if we don't create, if we don't build, write, paint new things, then um, in the future, we'll, we'll end up just protecting what we already have. So, this was, sorry for, for that small introduction, but just to give you a broader context why we are here and what are we trying to uh, um, kind of discuss and also to bring to you and, and to ourselves. So, I will be, I would like to start with a maybe brief, a little bit, uh, wider introduction, so you already hear heard names, but um, I would like um, us a little bit to introduce ourselves a little bit broader, maybe in a couple of words. So I will start from uh, from myself. I am Val Sandstrich, Livonian poet, Livonian myself, uh, head of the Livonian Institute, and also just by accident, co-chair of Global Task Force for making the action of indigenous languages. So Molly. To you, yeah. And sorry, I'm and I'm writing in uh, both in Livonian and Latvian my poetry. Um, hello, my name is Molly, um, and I'm from Ireland, but I do write uh, poetry in English. Um, and my first collection came out uh, last last May. So, yeah. My name is Anya Eolu, and I come from a very small Irish-speaking area in the southeast of Ireland. It's a peninsula, and the area is called Unrhyne. Um, I've published four collections of poetry. I write in Irish only, um, although I do translate my work to facilitate more people accessing it. But my first language is Irish. Thank you. Okay, my name is uh, Joseph Omorachu and I've published a couple of collections in, in the Irish language. Um, I've worked as an editor, a uh, lexicographer and um, a literary, literary magazine editor for a, n a number of years. So uh, I'm my, I was raised through the medium of English, but um, I've adopted Irish as uh, the language in which I, I write my poetry and other work in. Hello, my name is Anna. I, I write poems and movies, and but uh, in Latvian and in in Latgalian because Latgalian is my native language, and, and uh, it's my language in. Uh, I think in this language. Yeah, thanks for passing, Mike. <laughs> um, we already heard three languages here, and I would actually like to give uh, uh, a little bit of context of what are 
like what what kind of languages we are talking about here. So I would probably start with Livonian, which is very strange, uh, strange language with. Uh, especially poetry wise because there are currently approximately 20 fluent speakers so it used to be spoken on on very large area in latvia but um, over 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 the many uh, centuries it became um, it was assimilated in a great part by by latvian uh, but uh, current, currently you have approximately 20 Livonian speakers who can fluently speak, but however, out of those 20, you have three poets writing contemporary uh, in the Livonian. So in, in a sense, we sometimes say that this is uh, statistically maybe the uh, greatest poetry or greatest small literature in Europe. So could you, could you give a little bit of uh, context of Garrick, as we are? So, um, I suppose the, the, the point of difference for uh, the Irish language and maybe some of the languages that uh, have a very small number of speakers is that Irish has perhaps the oldest literature, uh, written literature in, in, you know, goes back to, written literature certainly goes back to the 6th century and the oral tradition obviously was a lot longer than that. So it's a very rich tradition of um, literary tradition and uh, spoken language tradition, folklore, um, going back many, many years. A lot, of a lot of the things regarding the promotion of the Irish language today within uh, the political context is to make people aware of the fact that maybe one or two generations previously young people that their their um, foreparents would have been native speakers and that fact once it's presented to young people in that particular way um, they certainly those who are who are open to the idea uh, see the language maybe in, in a different light and uh, are more exp are more open to embracing the language that was certainly the case in my own uh, when i was uh, when i was um, taught irish in, in school uh, the teacher i had who was from a, a native speaking area in 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 uh, in west cork just more or less without any reference to curriculum or a school text or anything like that just presented the language to us as something that was living and that had been part of of, of ourselves which we eventually embraced those of us who went in that direction yeah um in the area in which i live irish has been spoken in an unbroken chain of generations for almost two thousand years um and uh, for most of my working life, I worked as a secondary school teacher, a teacher of Irish language and literature. And many of the students uh, in my classes um, had sadly become very unaware of how close, as Joseph said, their, their immediate ancestors were to the language. Um, even today, it's only a matter of 170 years ago since there were millions of daily Irish speakers in Ireland. So 170 years ago might seem a long time, but in the history of humankind, it's just like a second. Um, so uh, we, as Joseph mentioned, have a very, very rich, wide um, tradition of literature in Ireland, oral initially and then written down. But we have... Um, <clears throat> mythological stories, we have poems, we have ancient lays, we have what we call the Fíniacht, the, the Fenian cycle stories and songs and poems that go with that. So there's an incredible uh, well of richness and source material there. Um, I am also on the um, Writers in Schools programme, which is run by our Irish poetry organisation, Poetry Ireland. So much of my work there involves going into schools, both primary level and secondary level, and doing workshops. And many of the workshops that I give, I do them in Irish language medium schools, where the students, most of them, the home language is English, but their parents have chosen to send them to schools that are run through Irish. So their Irish would be quite fluent. 
and I explore the richness of the language with them. Uh, I explore with them how they can put their um, poetic thoughts and feelings into a structure that helps them to use the vocabulary they have, and I also try and boost by giving them more of that richness of vocabulary. Um, and with the schools where I do workshops through the English language, I always relate it to the ancient tradition of poetry that we have in Ireland, so that they, even if they choose to continue writing in English, they're at least aware of the broader context in which they are emerging. So, but the majority of, uh, of Ireland, however, are English speakers, right? So, does it, does it add some kind of exclusivity being, uh, being uh, living in Irish speaking area and writing in Irish? Kind of exclusivity feeling. Exclusivity, I would hope not. Um, I would consider myself blessed to have been brought up in that area because I have access to two traditions in Ireland. Um, the, the most recent census in Ireland was taken uh, last year and the results came out very recently. And 1.8 million people in Ireland profess to be able to speak Irish. Now, that doesn't mean they're all fluent and all use it every day. The, the real number is much lower than that. But because Irish is taught as a school subject and it's a compulsory school subject, there would be um, quite a wide understanding of the language. The difficulty with um, successive government policies in Ireland has been that once students leave second level education, there are very few opportunities for them to actually engage with speakers of the language, continue to use the language, and so it just withers. Um, but uh, no, exclusive, I don't think so. I wouldn't want to be. Um, but the difficulty that I have is that um, I didn't study English as a literary language and I don't feel competent um, to present a, a good literary translation of my own work. Um, so what I do present, I always sort of caution that this is just a window onto the poem as opposed to the poem. But even if I were very proficient in the English language, I would think that translation has a lot of difficulty anyway. It's like looking through a tinted window. Um, you almost have to make an extra effort and take yourself to the place of the origins of the poem in its original language. And if you don't make that extra effort, you're bound to lose something. You may carry the heart of this, the poem with you, but sometimes you lose the soul, in my opinion. Thank you. Molly, how, how do you feel? So do you, do you um, carry this Irishness when writing in English? Yeah, I was thinking about that. Um, and I have had people say to me that my, my poems are, are really Irish. And like they're, you know, and I do use the Irish language, just a, a mention of a word or a turn of a phrase or something. And my, my poems would be quite rooted in place a lot of the time. Um, and so I suppose it's it's what I know and people around me and things. Um, so I do think I am coming from, from a, a heritage of Irish poets, like the poets that I read uh, are, you know, um, from Ireland. And, you know, you can only write from... I suppose what you what you've read as well. You know, you're you're part of a tradition, regardless. You know, um, and I do think I am part of an Irish poetic tradition. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So um, you say that um, uh, uh, poetry tradition in uh, in Ireland, so Irish poetry tradition in English. So it has like it, it kind of forms something completely different layer, which is despite being written in English. Yeah, quite... I think there's a huge difference between UK poetry and Irish poetry. I think this, and I think you'd recognise it. I think if you gave me two books and you, and you didn't tell me which was which, I would definitely know which was which. You know, it would be totally different, um, which is interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It's um, uh, writing in, uh, in two languages uh, for me, because I write both my poetry in Latvian and in Livonian. So what I 
uh, feel for myself is that my poetic tone changes greatly when I write uh, uh, in Latvian or in Livonian because my Latvian poetry is more fitting Latvian literary tradition while Livonian poetry when uh, when I start writing so it, it's both language wise it even changes so it has more rhyme it has um, Livonian symbols that may be understandable uh, by few and it's it has very much attached uh, to the language itself and what language offers and as an instrument so for, for me it was also like th just th uh, thinking about that it was quite a quite an interesting discovery that it's it's another kind of another me in this another language so I know that um, Anna is writing uh, also poetry in both languages do you feel something similar mm. yeah it's the same thing that was leading, because Rakstu gan Latvijas literārajā valodā, gan Latgaliešu valodā. Bet šī Latgaliešu valoda ir, kā daudz senāks paveic, daudz senāks Latviešu valodas paveic, un man ir jāmaina šis kods, kādā es domāju, tad, kad es rakstu latviski, es rakstu tā kā priekš valsts, Bet tad, kad es rakstu latgaliski, es rakstu priekš, priekš savas tautas. Uh, it is, uh, I do feel quite, quite the same about this when I'm writing in Latgalian and Latvian. When I write in Latvian, I write in Latvian literary language. But the Latgalian is also like a more ancient form of Latvian. Uh, Okay, when I write in, in Latvian, it's like more, I'm, I'm writing in this literary language and it's like more for the country. When I write in Latgalian, it's like a more personal feeling. I write it for myself. Šie latgaliešu autori, kuru ir diezgan daudz, viņi tā kā dzīvo savā burbulī. Un rakstot latgaliski, es jūtos tā kā situoties pret stikla sienu, jo mans lasītājs ir kaut kur aizšīs stikla sienas, un viņš nevar tikt cauri. Maybe my colleagues feel in the same way when I write in Latgalian and people who write in Latgalian, we kind of live in, in a bubble. So we are like more in like in a closed circle. And and the, the reader of uh, Latgalian is, um, I mean, when I write in Latgalian, it's like a little bit like I'm, I'm crashing against a wall because the reader won't understand me. So it feel, I feel more like we are in a, in, in, in a yeah, we live more like in a bubble. Mm -hmm. It's like glass ceiling. Yeah, yeah which uh, actually gets us to the question of audience. Because um, being that small in number as, as uh, there are Livonians, so you get quite uh, usually questions like, what's the point? Like, why do you write a language for if you have had no audience, nobody reading that? And then and, and I sometimes answer, so if you want to get audience, like write a text for pop song. So uh, it would be much easier you know, than writing a poetry because poetry itself is kind of, it's not, uh, it's, uh, it's not getting stadiums um, together. But uh, it really is that the same question that I feel that first of all, when when I write in, Liv in Livonian, so I rely to kind of my inner audience, me, those people who I know, maybe even those who are dead already. But this is kind of also my bubble or, or this glass wall around that I write in. But then I surprisingly discover people like proficient in Livonian reading, analyzing it and, and, and having their kind of thing, so even despite the audience is very small, there is still this kind of interaction. Jā, bet man mana dziļākā pārliecība, ka gan Līvu valoda, gan latgaliešu valoda ir visas latviešu tautas mantojums, ka mums būtu jāzina 
Es labprāt vismaz zinātu lību valodas pamatus, un es būtu ļoti laimīga, jā arī kurzemes, vidzemes un Rīgas lasītāji parētu izlasīt un izjust arī latgaliešu autoru darbus, jo tā būtībā ir arī jūsu valoda. I am convinced that Livonian language and Latgalian language forms part of the whole Latvia country and of the Latvian language. So I'll be really glad, for example, if I would know the basic of Livonian language and if someone in Kurlandia, which is the west side of Latvia, someone would know Latgalian. Which, uh, again, uh, takes an uh, interesting, interesting turn. So how it is with poetry written in Irish language? Is it, like, is it um, uh, uh, usual to translate it into English to make it more available, make bilingual ed editing issues or something like that? Shows it. Well... I think there's there's a danger of being um, of maybe conflating if that's the correct English word uh, a, a person's desire to to write and why per, a person would write in Irish in the first place. That decision often gets maybe politicised, whereas there are a lot there's a lot of certainly political elements associated with choosing to write in Irish, but. At the end of the day, you write because you, in whatever language you find, is able to uh, appeal to your own what you want to say and what your own what you're feeling in in culturally or uh, personally or anything else. So that decision has to be again t taken aside from politics and taken aside from the issue of numbers or. Um, uh, audience or that that comes afterwards you know if if you're successful as a poet in any language eventually one would hope in in uh, that maybe somebody might try to uh, produce bilingual versions of your of your um, work and now some poets are, are writing both Irish and English and many poets in Ireland uh, write in both languages but for me personally, um, Irish, I have found answers more of the questions that I have myself individually than English can. And that I'm more in tune uh, because of both having spent my life working with the language, but I'm more in tune also with um, how the language functions now on the level that I want to respond or you know, express myself in. So for me, the issue of uh, writing is a personal one, for certainly in, in, in the primary case. And then, you know, it's great if somebody wants to do a version or a translation of your poem, that's, that's really great. And I mean, this has been a wonderful experience. And the issue of translation and versions and all of those issues uh, is a whole different discussion, really, because translation is not the same poem in a different language. It's, it's a new poem, and that's a whole other area. But for me, I think the issue of, and I think maybe what happens with the political and the labeling of people who choose to write in a particular language, uh, I think it certainly gets people get maybe uh, categorized unfairly. And I, I know Seamus Heaney said one time when he was discussing uh, language and translation and language, political elements of, of uh, his own poetry, he said, you know, at the end, one has to uh, always recognize that I think the self-delighting uh, Self-delighting um, poetry, the self-delighting language of poetry, that that is the essence of poetry, that language itself is the essence of poetry. And you start there and then you, you sort of build from that. So um, that's my take. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had people say to me over the years, 
But why don't you write in English? You can speak English quite well. You know, if, if you need help with your vocabulary, I'm sure there's plenty of scholars there who will help you. Why don't you write in English so that we can all read your poems? But like I write from the wellspring of my own creativity and this is how it comes to me. And as Joseph says, you know, you have to craft your own art how you can best do it. And the tools of my art are the words and the expressions of the Irish language. And, you know, when somebody says to me, but why don't you do it in English? It strikes me like, you know, you're attending a piano recital by somebody who exclusively plays the piano and somebody in the audience puts up their hand and says, well, will you play it on the trumpet now, please? So that's how I feel when somebody says to me, you know, give us that poem in English. And also it's quite frustrating at times because um, we get invited to read at Irish language events. But because there is such goodwill in Ireland amongst people who speak a little Irish and would like to speak more but feel they don't have the opportunities to do so, uh, invariably your audience comes along as a bilingual audience, not as an Irish language only audience. So we find that we have to provide a version of our poems, which as Joseph says, is not really the same poem. So I feel that for every poem I write, for every poem in English that an English language writer writes, I have to write two. And the second one is never the same as the first one. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, we took, took the, the discussion in, in the very direction that there was one question that I uh, wanted also to ask. So, whether um, whether uh, what is the, this relationship between language and poetry? Is language a tool for a poetry, or poetry a tool for the language, which is also um, kind of thing? But um, but there was uh, one very interesting aspect, and I think that this is undervalued in what you said. Uh, is that decisions to speak the language, decisions to create in the language, decisions to inherit the language or to learn the language are individual. And these are um, what maybe is a difference between those languages which, which are uh, spoken by fewer people, and especially endangered languages, is that to keep your language, to, to be creative in it, is a consciousness decision that you have to make and you have to follow, but it's individual decision. And it's not like, well, why don't you have schools? Or why don't you, have, why don't you do this? Or why don't you write in English so that everybody can understand what you're speaking? Well, this is something that is very, very deep about, about human self, and, and, uh, and that is, something that is very fragile and actually had to be paid a uh, lot, uh, lot of attention to. Um, taking from here, so speaking about languages uh, or uh, uh, literature and poetry in, in, in languages used by fewer people, uh, there is sometimes this undertow, and I think in Latvian context it can quite well seen, uh, be seen in Latgalian, so that, well, this is kind of a smaller language, it's a regional language. It is something that, well, probably poetry is also more provincial, um, less um, kind of very peripheral. They'll probably talk about how something that happened in, in local shops, so it, it won't be that quality, you know. But um, how do you feel about this? <laughs> if you have happened to Ole, is being for a, being a poet writing in English from Ireland somehow less valuable uh, thought by 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 uh, by people writing in English in in I don't know Great Britain or states? Is is it less valuable for me to be writing in English in Ireland rather than writing in English in the UK or America? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, it's like how 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 is Irish poetry perceived? Oh, I was. Irish poetry perceived. Well, I think, <laughs> I think Ireland is a really good place to be a poet um, because I think there is a lot of support for Irish poets. Um, and I've, I suppose nearly, I suppose I've never actually, and, and maybe that's a sad thing, I've never considered the fact that I write in English really 
you know, um, because I was I was raised in English, um, Irish for me was really a thing I did in school. Um, it's not a thing I associated with creativity at all. It was a thing I associated with school books and having to learn things off my heart and all of that. Um, so there was never that uh, impulse. So it, it, it's really just been a thing I haven't really questioned at all, I suppose, which, which again, as I said, is, is maybe a sad thing. Um, and I think also, you know, if I say in Ireland that I'm a poet, I think people will be like, you write in English. Like, you know, so um, it's just, for me, it's been the norm. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah. Um, I think there's something very important to be said here as well that people might not be aware of. Um, as Ireland transitioned from being mainly Irish speaking to being mainly English speaking, um, English being the new language was instead of being imported as an entirely perfect language from the source from which it came, it was superimposed on the idioms of the original Irish language. So the English that we speak in Ireland is very coloured and very enriched by the fact that Irish seeps through all the time. And people use words in Irish when they speak English in Ireland and they're not aware that they're using Irish language words. And people will say to you, oh, I don't speak any Irish. But in the course of the conversation, they may have used half a dozen words that exclusively come from the Irish language. So the tradition that Molly is writing in, is she's writing in a language which isn't quite English English. It's, it's changing and it's changing rapidly towards being not, not Molly's use of language, but in general, the English language that's spoken by young people in Ireland today is more and more Americanized. And I think that's a worldwide phenomenon. But the language that Molly reads, the English written by English language poets in Ireland is very much enriched by the Irish language that preceded it. Anna? Yeah. 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 I feel like a Latvian who's writing in Latgalian and Latgalian has been part of our uh, heritage. And uh, if I won't be doing that, then we won't be able to, to keep the language alive. But I really, Lila Mera, I really, that's a Sagla Batshua Valodu, I really. Balz drošī pas jautājums, jo tā ir valoda, kurā runā Latvijas austrumu daļa, tas ir tuvu pie Krievijas, Baltkrievijas. The language question and to and to protect the language in in Latvia is also a question of a national security because Latgalian is spoken on the east side of Latvia. Un tas ir mūsu mūsu nacionālā vai no es Tas ir mūsu nacionālās identitātes jautājums, jo šiem cilvēkiem, kas dzīvo pierobežā, viņiem ir, ir jāsaglabā viņu pašapziņa. Un tas, ka mēs saglabājam šo valodu, tas arī, tas arī palīdz saglabāt viņu pašapziņu un piederību valstī. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it's also a question of a national identity, and it's very important uh, that these, this language is protected and these people have their pride in, in their language. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a question of the national identity and, 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 and their pride, that they're proud of language they use and where they live. Is that build there? I am to, uh, why I was like um, asking this question previously was the, that uh, it actually it's important that people uh, 
majority of people actually support and understand this. Because that, that is an issue, and, and uh, there's a good example from my experience with Latgalian, is um, that uh, like in, in a Latvian context and also Estonian context or Finnish context, so speaking varieties of languages like mm. dialects, they, they, it's like thought that, okay, uh, this is good for mocking. This is something that you can write a joke poem in. And it's uh, like getting the understanding that this is the language as any other language, it is taking a time. And uh, I will just like uh, say a couple of words mm -hmm. on Latgalian. So I remember one moment uh, um, in, in uh, newer times when uh, there was uh, one musical group singing in Latgalian appeared. And there was like two weeks change uh, that uh, changed um, in in my bubble the changed people understanding so the f first time they he heard the song and uh, there was oh how it's how funny there is a song in Latgalian so they are making this you know oh, so it's, it's a big joke and then two weeks later it was it's a cool cool music so this is this is fun, fun and very interesting and quality thing. And then, then that changed for for me. Uh, felt like it's very important change in the society from being like uh, everything that's different is well, it's different from the standard and therefore not okay. To accept acceptance that these differences is what makes us rich. Anna, you wanted to add? Something? Yeah, but the other problem Šī valoda tik tu mācīt arī, <coughs> arī skolās, jo um, jauniešiem ir ļoti viegli pāriet uz lielāku valodu. Mana paudze pārgāja uz krievu valodu, tagad jaunieši ļoti labprāt pāriet uz angļu valodu. Un tāpēc mums ir, ja, ja pazudīs latgaliešu valoda, par laiku pazudīs arī, arī latviešu valodu. I think another issue regarding uh, uh, the languages is um, languages that we study at schools. So uh, for young people who are now studying, it's a lot easier for them now to switch to another, like a bigger language. And in our days, it was the Russian that overcame uh, kind of our language. And nowadays, it's, uh, it's English language. Uh, so there's a big... Uh, risk of uh, if we are going to lose Latgalian language, at the end we're going to lose Latvian language also. And I would say from Livonian perspective, so the main thing is to keep moving. And just keep creating and keep keep um, kind of this engine going, so so there, there is a hope. So um, there's another aspect that I, I wanted to talk about and this is um, culture that is actually carried by the language so and um, in Livonian poetry in, um, in all three poets actually that uh, if I think now so all have these kind of coded things into into poem which not uh, even makes it uh, very hard to translate but even to understand to someone who is not from the particular context and that has been the one in tradition is 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 younger than Irish. So it's it's two hundred years, but uh, there are like kind of poems that uh, even you see the name of the person and which doesn't say to anyone anything, and then for someone from the community who knows the history, who knows all the events that have been there, he sees the name that only Livonians use for that person. And then he knows all the stories, so he suddenly understands all the all the all the text. How do you feel in in when you write the poetry? I don't know. I suppose yeah, all languages ha are loaded. Really, they're very loaded. Um, like this might be slightly off the point of your question, but what occurred to me when you were coming up to the question was that in Irish. Um, we have so many different words that mean the same thing, but they mean a very slight variation on the same thing. Um, a, a writer called Manachan McGann recently published a book called 32 Words for a Field. And 
you know, we're an island, so we get a lot of rain coming in from the Atlantic. And just off the top of my head, I can think of Bostach, Faring, Kjovran, Slacharal, Klagarnach, Knagarnach. All of those words represent rain, but they're all a different type of rain. And the difference between Kjovran and Slacharal is so minute. Kjovran is, it's misting, but Slacharal is, it's kind of a dirtier mist that gets you wetter, you know. So, um, like, how do you translate that? I, I, I just really don't know how, without a big glossary on the side of the poem, which, you know, makes it a study rather than a poem. Um, yes, names are definitely associated with uh, certain qualities in poetry, like one of our well-known Irish language poets is Nolan Ronal, and she's written very much from the folklore tradition, and she has um, written a series of poems about uh, mermaids, and she's written actually a very beautiful poem um, about the loss of the language. She's anticipating the first generation after the Irish language doesn't exist anymore, which we all hope won't come to pass. But it's very, very interesting. You know, she, she takes the mermaid as the symbol of the Irish language and the mermaid has been taken out of the sea and made live on land. And when she sees water, it invokes something in her memory, but she can't quite put her finger on it. She hasn't got a word for it, but it makes her feel uniquely at home, but she can't. So she has to go to psychotherapy to work out what it is this relationship with water once was. Um, so I don't know, maybe shows if you might have something more to the point, but maybe that's useful somewhere around the question. Yeah, well, the thing about poetry is um, the point keeps changing all the time. So <laughs> that's, that's part of its... Uh, of its delight, self-delight. But uh, I think something that we, we need to, I know, I, I'm not sure if you, if you were going to mention it, but I do think that for, for anybody writing in the language, if nobody has an, an eternal store of words or sources themselves, so it's very important and it's been a very uh, useful thing for the Irish language that it has uh, official status in Ireland and that therefore uh, people can get support for various different projects. And that has been particularly uh, relevant recently in the way that um, the Irish language in terms of lexicography and terminology, which I have some um, experience in, have been able to uh, digitize and, and, and um, make available to a much wider audience the uh, sources of uh, literature and uh, new terminology being coined and all this is available now uh, through various different websites and in uh, digital archives and that's been done it's been uh, to give Ireland independent state it's, it's due it has been fairly very good at recognizing the need for uh, gathering up those sources from you know the folklore commission the Tashke Kjolduchish, the yes, the Irish traditional music archive. So there's always been a, a great um, uh, appreciation of the value of gathering all those uh, resources from our heritage and from our past. And with with the advent of the technology and corpus building in lexicography and digitization and making all those um, remastering of old ar um, sound archives, there is now a much more readily available uh, corpus of all sorts of different sources and uh, available to everybody, even those who are not writing in Irish or whoever. It's, it's a really important work and the fact that there is, uh, you know, state bodies who will support that kind of work, uh, given the, there's, you know, there are many new projects uh, being set up. The, the lexicography project is one, but also uh, extremely sort of, uh, what sort of, um, uh, cutting edge development of uh, sound voice recognition, where you 
there's a there's a website now in Ireland where you can there are three main dialects of of the Irish language spoken, so you can put in your text, and you can choose which dialect this will be digitally uh, replayed to you. In. So that that was, and again, the initiative of one or two people in Trinity College, who got the, the who got the resources uh, to to do this, because there is a you know there is a an, an inherent value, uh, I think, prevalent among the people that this is work doing. So. Oh yes, the EU working language is, is it's also <laughs> a working language in the EU, which makes it, um, sure. you know, we have a now. Uh, point I often make is that there is now a vibrant Irish language community uh, who are translating and uh, working as um, um, legal uh, legal linguists or, yeah, and translators in the in, in Brussels and in, in Strasbourg so there's a new Irish language speaking community and a very vibrant one growing up uh, in in those cities uh, for the first time since mm. um, the seventeenth century. Great. So the, there is a new Geltacht area yeah. right in the heart yeah. of the Brussels. Yeah. So um, now we are coming slight, uh, slowly to the conclusive part of, of this great conversation, and maybe in the end, as as we already uh, got into the future uh, issues, like how do you see the future? Of both of Irish language and poetry in Irish language, and the same for Latgalian and the same for Livonian. Par nākot ne runājot, man tomēr gribas atgādināt to, ko valsts teica pašā sākumā nav mazu un lielu valodu I would like to remind of what Walt said at the beginning, that there is no big or small languages and there is no big or small literature. And Mm -hmm. Estonian writer uh, has said that there is no language that is not big enough to express the pain and emotions of the whole world. And Tikmēr arī būs šī literatūra. Tas ir optimistiskais variants. I have an optimistic view that even though there is only one person in Latvia or one person in, wo in world who speaks Latgalian and writes uh, literature, there is hope. Jo, kā jau arī teica kolēģis, šī valoda ir, tur ir tā, tādi senatnīgi slāņi, kā es jūtu, Īru valodā ir šis senatnīgums, tāpat arī, arī latgaliešu literārajā valodā un izloksnēs ir tik daudz senas latviešu tautas pagātības. Mm -hmm. Like uh, my colleagues said that, uh, like in Irish, also in Latgalian has a very, a lot of layers, historic layers. Mm -hmm. Un tāpēc mm -hmm. tā ir pagātība. And that's why it's a richness that will exist and it forms part of the Latvian history, of Latvian language history. Yes, well, uh, I too would be very positive and hopeful about both poetry and uh, poetry in the Irish language. Um, I think there are a group of young people now who are uh, coming to the fore, who are embracing the language, who have not got many of maybe some of the the uh, baggage maybe of the previous generations regarding the uh, colonial post-colonial problems that exist with a language that was suppressed and that had been lost by previous generations so 
There are a group of young people now who are embracing the language. Are those people who are writing and embracing the language in, in radio and television and all sorts of different media, and they're exploiting those media. And they, you know, they don't have, they see the language as something positive, as something aligned with maybe the green movement or, you know, the, the, the issues, that, the big issues of the day, which are not uh, reflected maybe by the commercial world or whatever, but they see the language in a more um, self-liberating and, you know, therefore a sort of a, a worldly liberating uh, uh, vein. And it's really refreshing to see people, young poets and uh, television and radio and, uh, you know, just embracing the language on their own terms. And I think that's a positive thing. And, you know, there will be always um, ongoing uh, discussions about uh, the correctness of people's grammar and, you know, the whole issue of uh, passing a, a language on or how the language changes from one generation to the next. But that's, for me, that's a sign of hope and a sign of uh, growth. If the language didn't change, we'd be talking about the la Irish as something that was and not something that won't, will be. Yeah, that's right. I agree with Joseph there and I too would be very hopeful. And I'm also aware of the growing community of young poets of Molly's generation who have chosen to uh, embrace the Irish language as their medium. And, um, you know, as Anna said, while, while one person continues to speak a language and insists on passing it on to the next generation, then that's a language refusing to die. Um, and that's very, very good. That always has to be a sign of hope. Um, but in Ireland, we're not anywhere, even though it's considered to be an endangered language, we're, we're not in any way looking at the language as being anywhere near the critical stage. In, in a sense, in some senses it is, in the Irish speaking areas where Irish has always been spoken, the number of daily speakers is shrinking all the time, unfortunately. And that's a much wider question, you know, it gets into planning laws and all that kind of thing that we don't have time for tonight. But outside of the Gaeltachti, there is a, a very vibrant community and, you know, amongst um, young poets of Irish, uh, many of them going opting for the spoken word uh, as well, which is an, another form of, of poetry. So, yeah, I would be very hopeful for the future. You know, it, it will certainly survive. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Molly. Um, yeah, I think that um, the, there will be always be a future. So, um, and I think that even in Livonian case, the future will be okay. So for the last 200 years, we, we shouldn't be here uh, objectively. However, Livonians are still here. Poetry is still being written and tradition is, is going on. And I think that one important thing is, and uh, maybe Livonians also show that, that uh, one should be like a weed, that you are like taken out and you keep just growing back for some unknown reason and appearing in, in all the all the corners of garden and uh, yeah and they will survive and um, thank you for uh, all of you for uh, for uh, this really nice and interesting discussion and do we have some time for questions from the audience yeah please How many Irish speakers are in nowadays in uh, Great Britain or England or uh, in Ireland itself? Do you have any idea? Okay, so are you are you speaking about the island of Ireland? Yeah. Well. Um, I referred to the most recent census earlier and that return, um, the statistic there was that 1.8 million people claimed to be able to speak Irish. But if you ask me how many people are speaking Irish in the Irish only speaking areas, um, I think 86,000 people said that they are fluent, but shockingly, 
only 20,000 people said that they use Irish on a daily basis. So that's where the real uh, danger zone is for the language in, in its native setting. But on the other hand, in cities and towns, not just throughout Ireland, but particularly, as shows have mentioned, in Europe and especially amongst the Irish diaspora in the United States, there's a huge resurgence of interest. For example, there's an Irish language college in my area and students come from the US, they come from Japan, they come from China. There's a place in uh, Glen Cullen Kill in Donegal and people from all over the world have been coming for some 30 years now learning the language and more and more third level institutions in countries throughout the world are offering Irish as a subject to study and Irish studies as a subject as well. So it's difficult to be precise in the answer, but I hope that gives you an idea. Just, there's also a vibrant Irish language community in in six counties as well, in in which wasn't wouldn't those figures wouldn't be included in the uh, in the uh, I was going to say free state uh, twenty six county <laughs> census. Yeah. yeah, just to throw in a little bit of politics there. You know? Yes, that's a small p. Uh, maybe you already planned this, but I was hoping we could hear poems in your language. Yeah, yeah that that was that's, about. That, that's what um, I want to make sure. <laughs> so then, same question to her about Latgalian. How many Latgalian speakers are there nowadays? How many Latgalian speakers daily? Yes, two thousand two hundred. One 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 thousand two Trīs desmit pieci tūkstoši ir tie, kuri šķiet, tas, tas ir ne tikai Latgalē, bet arī visā, visā Latvijā un tie. Uh, according to data from 2011, there are 35,000 speakers of uh, Latgalian, not only in Latgalia, but also in the whole Latvia, the whole country. I would like to add a little here because, like people from uh, from Latgalia, and I think that that, that those who who can speak Latgalia, and there are definitely definitely more, but uh, um, it's a fragile thing, language. This that's this. But what uh, we were talking about, it's also important not only to know the language or have the language in the family or learn it in schools, but it's where you use it and your opportunities to to live in the language community or have language around you, which are important. So there is an example from Estonia. Uh, there is in southern Estonia, so there is a group of Vuro, which is different language from, from the main, main Estonian. And uh, they claim that they have 25,000 uh, language speakers objectively. So actually polls show, showed higher amount. But um, recently this year, so they had a congress and they did some mathematics and they tried to understand how many kids in families actually speak the language of those 25,000. And then they realized that it's 26. So it is extremely fragile. It can change in a generation and even less. So this is, this is why it is actually very important to and also why the creativity in, in such languages is very important because when you are creating things, you are also providing the environment and also providing people, language speakers and, and also young people, the understanding that I can do a lot with, with even with that uh, proficiency that I have, with that maybe more narrow corridor not being so so kind of rich vocabulary, so proficient in language use, but there is a lot of creativity opportunities that you have. Uh, hi, sorry, a bit of a technical question for Molly. Um, you mentioned that you could tell the difference immediately between Irish mm. and uh, Irish poetry written in English and UK poetry. Um, is that just terms of phrase or is that 
Is that grammatical? Is there something about your poetry communities that's coming through that's very contemporary? And also we've heard a lot about, I guess, survivalism. Yeah. When you're writing in, in, in English, do you feel that there may be something positive in collaboration there, that you're collaborating with? Um, do, you, do you sort of figure yourself as a, a voice that joins Ireland and Britain or the English-speaking world and, and lets us see a bit more of Ireland? Mm, that's really interesting um yeah I think what you're what you're saying is it is a lot of it is is turns of phrase and I think culture and references um and the way that we perhaps describe things you just you just notice you know um that that makes it uh, unique to living in Ireland I suppose um and then the other question um, yeah, I th and I think there's, there's particularly um, I've noticed because I've, I'm also kind of connected with an American publisher um, that I do events for and things. I've noticed there's a big grow or love um, between American poetry and Irish poetry because so many people in America have our, we have Irish heritage and, and they love Irish poetry and they pick it up and they say, oh, I've been in this place that this poem is about and my ancestors are from this place and my ancestor says this or that or, you know, so that's, that is far reaching and that is kind of magic, you know, so yeah, it's a great question. Thank you. Uh, hi, I, I lived in Ireland for a couple of years and I just wanted to uh, say, uh, pardon my uh, throwing in what's the crack uh, in between there, but it, it, it was in the context of what you were discussing. And it made me think like that is, uh, in the time that I lived there, the two Irish words I probably picked up were crack and slancha. So that makes me think like how an en uh, endangered language could be injected into like a more popular language, like Laurie Anderson said, language is a virus, right? So is there other like words that are in, you know, Livonian or Irish uh, that could be taken and put into uh, English or other, you know, more widely used languages? I know it's kind of a weird question, but that's how I roll. It's one I haven't been asked before now, but um, I'll give you my tuppence worth. Uh, rather than having words injected into, so I presume you mean Irish words injected into the English language, they're already there in Ireland. Um, we have a present habitual tense in Irish grammar, which is, um, it's like, I am here every Saturday. So it's beam in Irish, beam and sogach sahern. So ta is the immediate present and beam is the habitual present. That doesn't exist in the English language. But during the transition from speaking Irish to speaking English, what Irish people speaking English would say to reflect that present habitual that they didn't inherit with the English language is I to be here every Saturday. So they may do be, the present habitual. But if you said that to an English person, they would have no idea what you were talking about unless they had heard it before. Um, so I think rather than, you know, injecting it, it's actually losing it because it was already there very, very richly. Have anything to no. <laughs> okay. um, oh, well, uh, that's even more there. <laughs> Because basically Latvian is um, like one third of the Latvian has its Livonian roots. So if you, in Latvian, when you talk like uh, stress on the first syllable, that's Livonian heritage. If you use Latvian word maxa to pay, it's Livonian heritage. If you use Latvian word casus, uh, which is uh, marriage celebration, it's Livonian word. If uh, Even if you uh, use Latvian word by, or it's Livonian, or Vajag, it's Livonian to need. So basically every Latvian already knows quite a lot of Livonian, but does not, like, unconsciously. So, yeah, but additional words are okay. So we are positive about that. 
Hello. Um, my question is going to be about Latgalian, and uh, I really want to ask it in Latgalian. So, who you said at least yet to them tell like him to go as to go a Latgalian, who are just there on the words of all of those, but nothing is apart from that. So, when you start to see people who are as popular as yet, Latgalian all of them, and at the least, it's just a few. Bet i nazan, kur sok tiek atsirtas burbuļas tagad un ko tu ir pašreizējā situācija, ja nazan Latgrīšu valodu, un ja nazan orpus savas ģimenes lūkā? Lāls paļdis, ka jūs runojot latgaliski. Tas uzreiz man ir atbildē uz vaicojumu, ka tā valodā ir nokūtne, jo ir daudz jaunu cilvēku, Tāpat kā jūs, kuri runoja, kuri grib izamocēties un kuri arī roksta tam abalūdā. Man tad varēs iztūkot. Šī sēdā, šī sēdā, šī sēdā, šī sēdā, ka tās pēc, kas spēc lāngvīšu. Tā fakt, ka tās spēc, ka tās spēc, ka tās lāngvīšu ir futuru. Jā. I just want to stress uh, that uh, the significance of translation, somehow you say that it's another type of poetry, yeah, that it was originally created, yeah, but uh, if there would not be translation, we would not know many poets and uh, poetry in uh, many countries and languages. So many thanks to translators for their work and their training to understand the soul of the poetry, yeah, and the essence of the idea of the poet. Thanks. And uh, yeah, translation is something that that essential and it's extremely hard to do that. Um, speaking of which, I think that this is the perfect moment when we, from the discussion, from the conversation, come over to hearing Irish poetry and translations. So. Thank you. Um, before we move to that, just a big hand of applause for our five who shared so deeply. And um, yes, Waltz is right. We have a very special treat. So Molly's poetry, Anya's poetry, and Shosa's poetry has been translated into Latvian. So this is the first time for this to happen. We are not aware of Irish language poetry having been translated into Latvian yet. So maybe we're wrong. If somebody finds another example, please let us know. We'd love to know about it. But to our knowledge, this is the first time that Poetry originally written in Irish is now in Latvian. And we're indebted to Eva and uh, Ivars who worked very hard and um, creatively to turn the poetry of these three wonderful poets into, into Latvian, which, as you rightly say, is its own art form. So there's a whole other conversation there which comes up in, in various contexts that we've had and, and I think might be a theme to explore in a future conversation. So Yeva is going to join us to share um, the Latvian translations and we're going to hear Molly, Onyes and Shosa's poetry in their original forms as well. So please, um, so Valtz and Anna, thank you for, for being with us and hope you enjoy. Yeah. I'll read uh, three poems then. Uh, so the first poem uh, I wrote in March on, during the, the spring equinox in the year two, 2020 when COVID, the pandemic had just arrived on all our doorsteps and we were uh, given all sorts of uh, horrendous uh, predictions by the government that this thing that we didn't know what what was was coming and I just thought of all the other uh, uh, looking back then on the history of, of our various different um, pandemics and uh, I suppose 
how 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 our four parents and the people who went before us, our ancestors, dealt with various different pro problems over the years, and how they incorporated uh, their experience of those problems. And I'm just looking forward. Um, I was using the the idea of the equinox to where half of ha the, the day and night is evenly divided as a kind of a metaphor for uh, hope and uh, all that was before us. So I'll read this now anyway. Konucht an arig feha feha. An arig shin hies in eachter clave. No bedeger sechri it has she. Dahanich ar shinchir gamahi. Hogadish de stachi fe chyalach and tea. Hogach vehistig ne he hide. Hogach animal ha bia ha canna ete. Ta a mechan tarakar veer. No morachan a doi town feke hid. Near vein nahaka a del hain a hurda tail day. Ach dimig shin is hanig sha. Is malartich duokal kienda er an oliacht green vacht. A hurrach shin gobun an anger, la gal egin a machen sa. I'm sure ehe ele shin shine shans. Ach salasa ta nuvan. Ta an man kirkel agus an grian, a spalicht ga falsa le chele. Ta sagin in our griish dig. Na begaun ach posa kriche. Gor oringe true oin at an spray rainte, a hyun hain la mar la dan dochus agus den uan dalte er an ille rinne bo. Uh, she stand boys, lad lad. Man ir iepriekš jau jātvainojas, ka ir izdarīt tā kā nedrīk darīt proti, ka es tūkoju to man no angļvalodas bet mēģinot uh, kaut ko saprast arī no īru valodas, bet nekad nevajag tulkot no starpnieku valodas. Tas vienkārši tā nedrīkst būt. I'm apologizing for mostly translating from English. <laughs> Pavasara stāvu stāvji 2020. Šis ierastais nemieras krūš kurvi dziļumā vai varbūt sirdī, nu tajā rajonā arī mūsu senčiem tas būtu zināms. Tikai viņi to ielaistu zem jumta, dotu tam naktsmājas un sauktu to jaukos un mīļos vārdos. To laika jūra uzbangoja pie pašām namdurvīm vai atklīda baumas par dekšanu austrumos, nedomājot viņi padavās dieva gribai. Bet tad uzradās kas cits, sendienu vārdus un nosaukumus nomainīja zinātnes precīzais destilāts, solīdams novest līdz lietu būtībai. Ja ne šobrīd, tad pavisam drīz ap jāņiem varētu gaidīt. Taču vēl tagad, kad divreiz gadā sauli un ekvators lakstojas savā flirtā, ik viens no mums zina, ka tas tikai pa jokam, bet mēs nabadziņi pus uz pusi vinnēsim un zaudēsim cerības un šausmas, kas dāvātas katrai dvēselē. Thank you, Eva. Uh, the next poem I read is called... Uh, Ohuig, which means uh, northwards, and uh, myself and Eva had some correspondence regarding this version. So uh, uh, it was really great, I must say, from my point of view, to have somebody as distinguished as Eva to, you know, try and get into the bones of of this uh, poem. I suppose it's or it's basically a poem about the tension between our obligations and traditions that we feel and our uh, need to move forward or our expectation to move forward and try new things and how maybe things don't always work out as uh, planned. Anyway. Ohuig. Fiech rol ten arde, gavekir fear ne spede, an nochte chut o duig, taev ne fahane den chnok, Ach ta freach is atin le dogum, er larga shin a heimshre du chate, cholantalov a hanu. Na teir stonchi hishin, nar yeldum a minart, dishicha cosain roam la glana as machine, an paul partig le duna, mar slugach a kuin, an vudog hormig a bard a ribagum. 
ta garvloch a scrahan an ama, the torch con mean tirchus, soladorid ay garavile, solishianid, fear ne feshkine. Uz ziemeliem. Skaties uz priekšu, lai ieraugi apvārsni, kas atplauks ziemeļos pakalna aizvēja pusē. Bet man vēl virši un irbulenes jādedzina nodeldētās pagātnes nogāzēs, lai pagā, paglābtu zemi. Šie sīkstie krūmi, kas nepadevās, kad biju jauns, tur ir vēl aizvien. Tie stājas ceļā, kad gribu atmiņu izmēst. Vēl jāaizpild tas akacis, kas toreiz mēmi aprīja jauno telīti, labāko kāda man bija. Aizvien vēl man jāatgūst raupjā laika daldētā augsne, pirms dodos uz klinti, lai noliektu to, ko redzu sev priekšā. Thank you, Eva. Now, the next poem I, uh, I need to give some context for. Uh, it's related to the uh, rebellion uh, against the uh, English rule that happened in the part of Ireland from where, where I was brought up in 1798. And uh, there were a, um, a community there of people, one of them lived in the house where I was born. Uh, they were Quakers, a society of friends that had come to Ireland with, with Cromwell, who hasn't got a good name in terms of Irish history, but they were very well respected in their role as uh, non-competents and they never, um, they held a complete line of peace between uh, the, the, the two sides in the rebellion. So they, they never, uh, uh, if they saw people who were fleeing from the uh, Royal Army at the time or the official army, the Redcoats at the time, they would um, never uh, betray them. And so they were respected for their role as uh, peace, peace loving people and uh, true to their faith at the time. Now, um, this person who lived in, in the house where I was born, his name was Joseph Williams. And he wrote an account about 50 years later of seeing the horrors of people uh, fleeing from uh, one of the, the last battle of the rebellion, which happened in, in Vinegar Hill in Enniscorthy. So it's called Joseph Williams Quaker, and uh, I'll read this then. So, Honig she morache stoche, Lasrache o luske na dihe moore, A lee na spede o huigweig, Agus e na hasav gudalav, a grua glass an achi, last dost and willin a ruir a togach aimsher crummel. Near Havig se daragar ood, le gael na gaul, a huel and cosson coir, umura quail deer ha hrawa, either keen arin and the scriptur, e a daragan the vocal nefa, agus a rear gafil na baha, er looked pike agus pike a rain. Tresh vrish in the gair, rinamana skilhe, tarman ivalach on gunnert yarug, then lochta istorus ne mine, fos near lorigshe fianisha a hool, connashkehe a veal, er in gorawish at on a chri. A mach se huigu me a harlashin, is lan fos ishtach se sheu kaum. Bavo an kun of ege ar baul ne hivrecha chon shanachish agas kuntus kreen av raka lachid blien anun ar poor biach nar hlan ar fad an toidiv agas e koidiv na gorpan. Josephs Williams Quakers No vietas kur viņš stāvēja Stingri uz zaļa zāļai nā vaiga, tieši virs dzirdamām, kas būvēts Kromvēlu laikā, viņš redzēja pašu ļaunāko, kā liesmas no lielās mājas svilin debes ziemeļos. Slaktiņā viņš nenostājās nevienā no pusēm, negāja ne pie gēliem, ne galiem, bet staigāja savu taisno ceļu, savu taisni izarto vagu starp svētajām aizsargjoslām, pārcelādams ik svētīgo vārdu, tos dālādams vienādi, pīķiem un piķemicēm. 
kad etiķi kalnā viss gāja vaļā, šausma pārņemtās sievas bēga un patvērās klēts augšā zem spārēm no sarkanas vārču slāpēm pēc asins. Bet viņa acis lūkoja neko neredzēt, lai mēle nenodod sāpes, kas mājoja dziļu sirdī. Tas viss notika piektajā mēnesī un turpinājās vēl sestajā arī. Un gal galā viņš varēja izlīdzēt vēlāk ar skaitļiem un kopsavilkumiem, kad 50 gadi bija apkārt. Viņš to uzsicēja papīram, ne visi aprēķina gan precīzi atbilda līķu skaitam. Thank you very much. But so this one, yeah, this one, and then this one. Okay, again, like Joseph, I am deeply honoured that somebody of Yeva's standing, uh, literary standing, took it upon herself at very short notice to translate my poems and honoured to have them translated into Latvian as well. Um, the first one I'll read you is called Mamo Egan Lina, and Mamo is the Irish word for granny. So I recently became a grandmother and when I gave birth to my own three children, I thought there would never be anything as nice again. But actually becoming a grandmother has been, you know, a very enriching um, experience. So one afternoon around um, my grandson's first birthday, I was out at the clothesline helping my daughter to bring in clothes because he didn't sleep very well. So every time he slept, I encouraged her to get a chance to rest. And when I was bringing in all the little tiny socks and the onesies and the sleep suits and that, all of the memories of having my own children as infants flooded back to me again. So it's called Mamo Egan Lina, Granny at the Clothesline. Tail thin londo, ribba in a glay robe, three glue her crave a ground sheer glass, a boggart kang a droving oiga. Er hold a loiga, ham a garvak a veil a hoinless and sail more a gale da. Shuli in troch no na arig er varakini, her gari, curren green tolly, cogger a gloss a loss or valaplas oiga, ham a viola foot er a hale less nahini salish. Ni luhach angel altu os ar der agle de ruste, e irin verg a nartu tri nail nar hag de vaher le blien. Ha dolter hocht comin le clov quinin er hol ne dar, blahin ros er de lecken vog tri dashling mala. Tanga er schau a mil piona gach stocker er heet ni ha in menine, mar will one zi a dausig a soch as munnertli vestini a crohening eogle myrish. Balim a will tirim is filling in yan mavaroige, gach balkish verg dar yelig worm is shirich nagalunta, leonin a muller shall re machine, ham tagas lawn, hugus lam nakosa. That's mammy bevel saugus. Strust nest zarin kosha yak nabi, is sprout sauri mozalam pazarem, and grassas lido to slogu. Aiz aizkariem mans mazdēls cieši iemidzis un pasauli viņam līdzi. Pavasara pēcpusdienu zogas pāri mauriņam, sildošā saule čukst ausīs puķei 
uz pļava svaiga, bet manas lūpas gaismu ciet aizaudusi. Pat eņģeles neierunāsies skaļi, lai nepamodinātu tevi mazais no spēcinošā miega, kādu tava māte nepazīst jau veselu gadu. Krūmos slēpi struši, tavi matiņi mīksti, kā viņu kažoks, rozes plaukst uz taviem vaigiem no medainiem sapņiem. Katra zeķa, kā lunkana mēle, nokarājas no knaģa uz manas meitas veļas auklas, rāpulīši priecīgi dejo, jaciņas līksmi plivina minī rokas. Es novācu visu, kas sauss, un sargājot turu azotē. Atgriežas visas sīkās drēbītes, kas zudušas paudžu bezgalībā. To smarža pilda manas atmiņas telpas. Esmu tikus cauri, izdzīvojusi esmu. Um, my second poem is um, a result of having read a report um, about a year ago about the catastrophic effects of the fas fast fashion industry. And I begin the poem with a sort of a, um, a statement of fact um, that the first fact I state is that 39,000 tons of fast fashion clothing from the West is dumped in the Atacama Desert in Chile each year. And the second fact I state is that it takes seven and a half thousand litres of water to make a pair of jeans. So the poem is called My Promise. And uh, I promised myself on reading that report that the next time I would just sort of in a fickle kind of a way pick up an item of clothing in a shop which I didn't really need that I would just think twice and put it back on the shelf. So that's what this is. My alone. I won't bother restating the uh, facts. Tara Degan tas kelter is kahan the shopuila diani. Nihe ma khrot a nacht an khom a hila na ma khaling. Fiun urivim dar lam khun shliyka le kligan ron div. Nieki mantan is jak kemikyan is dachna is shihalu an awing flochta. Ish khun sukar le dialogue baite gampa balag ban le grain er varishke. Snahi ni sirga is kyocha fear fearvaha is misha a karlishan erdach. Ekut Eric, Hame Katim Mahove a Kahav is a Kinach, a Kahav Muine, a Kahav Stile, a Kahav a Mach. Ingov, Beg Srian Lemavian, Curret her Nasher and Shelf na jeans na full men a brawing. Talk me down, Ba, Queen Ome, er Ishke and Yenta or Atro Ru, Agas Shacht Mila Dinna Dote is Rod Valle Fiote again a Goldi, Agas Gallum. Gomemenis Kurami, Gosmuinome and Ishis Rish, Erhanach Shelige, Evosach Atacama, O Hachta, Eg Oilacht Ni. Mansuliums. Pedea laika ar veikal spoguliem kaut kas nav kārtībā. Te nerāda manu figūru, man ķermeni, lai gan esmu, man šķiet slaika kā melns runas. Viss, ko tur redzu, ir gārdzoši strauti. Pilni ķīmisku krāsu, zivis nekustīgas kā ūdens rozes, bālie vēderi pavērsta saulei. Cilvēka roku veidot staipekņi žņaudz dzīvību, un es piedalos slapkavošanā. Esmu gatava maksāt, esmu pagurusi valkāt un pirkt, valkāt virsvērtīgo, valkāt moderno, tad izsviest. Šodien pievilkšu grožus iekārei, likšu atpakaļ plauktā džīnas, ko man nemaz nevajag, uzcelšu dambi. Domāšu par ūdeni, kas izlietot džīnām, kā strauma tiek novadīta uz apvītušu ciemu un kā tur tālumā septiņi tūkstoši izslāpušu cilvēku katrs tiek pie litru ūdens. Un es apsolu būtu uzmanīgāk padomāt par medīti izgājušo lapsu, kas atakamas tuksnesī aizrīs ar dizaina indi. Ok, so the last poem I'm going to read you. It was going to be a different one, but Eva likes this particular one and she asked me to read it. So it's the least I can do for her, considering she went to all that trouble over the last few days. And this is just a very simple poem about an observation of mine on passing my local florist's shop. When the door is open and you get that beautiful waft of flowers and it just occurs to you that the florist, in, in a way that she never anticipates, becomes part of so many people's lives for happy events and tragic events and all the rest of it. And when she closes the door at the end of the day, she locks 
the tragedy, tragedies that haven't yet happened, she locks them safely inside, at least for the night. So it's called The Girl in the Flower Shop and Colleen is up in the Mlaach. Us glean she exdun and she daloga gachla, and all and she kuracht chrysanthemum misgossena, fechen harter her marishasen ra ros diog darag godochasach in a mockade stone. Blahi and gach se sur in enacht in a gardine, scarren the tulipi and miola, is beren skilta on ishil tir hoha. Neatin she carthi bega, a ogri and fucka livian dacker a raw. Is fechen ner na rabini gorma is bon daraga vegla kangelt. Den is she flask nu rowing yov, bader, the fragoidigen nor harla fos. Is nor the hooky kui kunashe, scopishi suas na piotele hit, tarring ocean doris in a dig. Is falke go kaudi and tauchi, slan fech las gomadin. Maiden putuegla. Katru dienu viņa atver un aizver slēģus, ieelpo smaržu no krizantēmām un stiebriem, paskatās uz 12 sarkanām rozēm, kas optimistiski slē galvas skārdas painī. Viņas dārs katru sezonu zied tik saskanīgi, tūpes paver lūpas un stāsts stāstus no Nīderlandes. Viņa sakārto kartītes ar vārdiem, ko grūti pateikt, un skatās uz rozā un zilajām lentēm, kas vēl būs jāsasien. Šodien varbūt viņa savīs pāris vainagu, kādai vēl nenotikušai traģēdijai. Un, kad pienāks bez piecām seši, viņa saslaucīs nobirušās ziedlapiņas un salaustos kātus, aizvērs aiz sevis durvis un nākotnes notikumus droši ieslēgs līdz rītam. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'll just I'll just read um, maybe two poems. I feel like people would like to have wine and things. Um, so this poem is called "The Drop Off," um, and it's about uh, my father driving me to a residential treatment center um, where I was in treatment for anorexia a few years ago. The drop off. Everything's a blur. You don't play talking heads, Bob Dylan. Talk about work or your iffy stomach. You read the road as if it's encrypted with what a father should say on a drive like this. Should I apologize for your missed appointments, unread emails? There is always someone who needs you more. Mostly, I'm sorry that I'm not as happy as you raised me to be. I want to ask the GPS the quickest route to end this silence. When we reach the center, you pull up and go straight for the boot. This is what you know to do, to lift the heavy thing. Tell me to take your good umbrella. You drag my suitcase to the door where the nurse stands with a notepad and clutches your arm. I'll come back soon, you say. But she smiles and says it's better if you don't. But, uh, well, first of all, I didn't translate Molly. Uh, it was Ivar Steinberg's, and uh, I don't find this poem here. Because I was told you weren't going to be reading my poems. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I'll do the one I feel comfortable with. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. <laughs> I have one here that I, I will do this one. You, you should have this one. Um, so this, this poem is called All the Things I Want to Do. Um, and it's about where I'm at now in my recovery, which is a much better place. Um, but sometimes I do struggle. So, all the things I want to do. I wake at six to sprint laps of the marina so I can eat the rye toast you will grill for me later. You hear me tighten my ponytail, not the lace of my shorts. My muscles tensed, facing away from yours. 
You remind me of all the things I want to do. Parachute in Vancouver. Find the ring in a barren brack. You laugh. Say, even though you hate dried fruit. You plan a marathon of movies. Sister act the Rograts, a Sunday drive to Loch Hine. You suggest that some morning we'll bake scones or soda bread. I reply that I want real pancakes and my hand goes to my lips to stuff back the words. I never thought I would get to this stage. Sitting on the corner of your bed, unclipping my sports bra, slipping off my ankle weights. Visas lietas, ko vēlos izdarīt. Ceļos sešos, lai skrietu pa piestātne un varētu ēst rudzu maizi, ko pēcāk man sildīsi. Tu dzirdi, kā savēlku zirgasti, aizšņorēju šortus, sasprindzinājusi muskuļus un novērsusies no tavējiem. Tu atgādini visas lietas, ko vēlos izdarīt. Izlēgt ar izplētni Vancouverā, atrast gredzanu bārnbrekā. Tu smejies, lai arī tu neciet žāvētu saugļus. Tu plāno filmu maratonu Sister Act, The Rugrats, svēdienas braucienu līdz Lūkainai. Ierosin, ka vajadzētu kādu rītu izcept plāciniņus vai sodas maizi. Atbildu, ka gribu īstas pankūkas un mana roka pienāk pie lūpām, lai iestumtu vārdus atpakaļ. Nekad nebūtu domājis, ka nonākšu līdz šim līmenim, kur sēžot uz tavas gultas stūra, atpogājot sporta krūšturi, noslidinot potīšu atsvarus. Thank you so much. Sorry. <laughs> If we have patience for one more, I have a special request of Molly. Will you read your poem you call the angry love poem? Um, yeah, sure. uh, so it's don't pick me tulips. Don't pick me tulips, compare hips to moons. Pluck me concertos or use the word muse. My eyes are not periwinkles. My skin is not linen. If you try to rub my feet, I'll snap you in half like the wishbone of a chicken. There'll be no late nights, no rubbing shoulders in bed. If you so much as unbutton a sleeve without asking, I'll yank you by the scruff of your neck. Forget bolognese, candles, red wine. Look, if we are going to do this, know that I was raised among vultures. Thank you. But uh, Ivar says it in Latvian too, so... Neplūciet man tulpes, nesalīdziniet gurnus ar mēnesi, nestringšķiniet koncertus un nelietojiet vārdu mūza. Manas acis nav kapmirtas, mana āda nav lins. Ja mēģinās spaidīt man pēdas, es pārlauzīšu tevi uz pusēm kā vistas kauliņa. Nebūs vēlo vakaru vai masāžu gultā. Ja atpogās kaut piedurknīti bez paprasīšanas, aiz čupra sakamšu un aizsviedīšu. Aizmirsti boloņas mērci, svecas, sarkanvīnu. Saprot, ja mēs to darām, zini, ka mani audzināja maitu lies. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Anya. Thank you, Eva, for all of those beautiful words. Um, I know darkness is falling. It's getting cozier in here. There are a couple of glasses of wine, I think, still left on the table. Anyone who feels that they'd like to stay and chat some more, chat to our poets. You're very welcome. Anyone who wants to run for the hills, that's the door. <laughs> but we'd love you to stay and chat. So thank you for being here with us this evening. Check out, there's lots more activities happening for Poetry Days. So check those out. Um, you'll find the programme online and um, we're looking forward to seeing you again at Irish Embassy events too. Thank you for being here. <laughs>